It's Feedback Gaming. Welcome back to another Hearts of Iron video. We're going to go through my top tips that have made me become a better Hearts of Iron player. Be aware, I've got 250 hours in the game as it stands right now. And every time I've learned one of these tips that I'm going to give you today, it's made me a considerably better Hearts of Iron player. Be aware, if you do have 100 or 200 hours in the game, a lot of the tips I'm going to give today, you probably have already heard. You might have some surprises, but just be aware, if you, do know, if you have ever heard all these tips before, this video probably isn't for you. Okay, first of all, we're going to talk about supply. So, supply view is either F4 at the top of the keyboard, the default key, or it's this little jerry can icon on the bottom right. When you select it and you have a supply bottleneck, you can go up to the jerry can icon, hover over it, and it tells you where your bottleneck is. Now, it's either going to be three things. It's going to be infrastructure in the, this province, the one before it. Or it's going to be repaired infrastructure in this province or the one before it. Or it's going to be a bottleneck on a port. In this case, you hover over it, it says local infrastructure is 2, and the previous infrastructure is 18. So the problem with this province is the infrastructure inside of this specific province. If I increase this here, you see the very bottom, northeastern Canada and northern Canada. And if you do click on the province, it's only got one infrastructure on both of these states. So that's the explanation why. So just to summarize, it's either going to be building new roads in the state, or the one before it. So it's the, it'll be this one here. Or it'll be repairing the infrastructure in this province or the one before it. Or it could be a possible port, a very, very small port, and uh, it's causing a bottleneck all the way along. In that case, you need to build a, a bigger port. Awesome. If you are a Europa Universalis player or a Victoria 2 player, this is not new information, but this is so useful if you're hearing about an event in the world or something happens and you have absolutely no idea what it is. If you're pretty good at geography, then you're probably not going to need this either, but this is it, the find icon. So, give you an example, if I type for Mexico, I get the cities, I get the states, and I get the countries as well. So, if you want to find something, that's an easy thing of doing it. The hotkey for that one is F, but you can also click on the magnifying glass. So, let's just say Mexico, and then go for... British Mexico, and it's this state here. That's super important, by the way, if you're not very good at geography. Okay, what else? All right, so a few hotkeys now. See if I can get a bunch of troops to give a demonstration. Okay, so we've got three military police divisions here. I thought we'll grab a few, put them on a new team, and then move them here. So the first thing that's nice to know is how strategic redeployment works. Now, what people think is this is a toggle button, and what it'll do is you tell them to move, and we'll just tell them to stop for now. I'm just going a bit fast. Uh, tell them to move, and um, yeah. Yeah, so what you do is you tell them to move, and you think, oh, okay, I want them to go faster. So strategic deployment is like, hang on a second, they're not railroading. Why aren't they doing that? And the reason is, is you have to select strategic redeployment and then select where you want them to move. I've seen some really big YouTubers and really big streamers, name and no names, make this mistake. So you press B, the hotkey, or you select strategic redeployment, and then you right click on where you want to go, and there you go, they are railroading now. So it's gone from three days to 12 hours. Nice to know. Okay, let's move them all here. Now, this is, I'm probably going to show you like a really horrendously bad example here. But if there was a border, we'll do. Mm, no, nah, it's too far away. But if you were like covering on board, let's imagine that this is a border. This is a nation in between the rivers. And you wanted to cover the border really quickly. So this is going to be really useful if you're not relying on the AI. You just want to rely on your own micromanagement. Which, just to give you the heads up, I've found in my experience, if you are a mining nation and you're conducting your first war, you probably want to conduct your own battles by yourself. You don't want the AI to take over because they'll either take more casualties or they'll charge into areas where they're going to lose. And it's going to affect your supply in the long run. So it's best to micromanage them. So the two keys you'll need are S and H. S is split, which splits them in half. And H is hold ground. Pretty self-explanatory. The icons are here. S to split and H to hold ground. So what you potentially could do is go here. You go... Tell them to move here. Split. Um, split move here. Split move here. And then they will all filter out that way. With this one having the most troops. And then less and less as they move along. Which is really useful, oh, really useful. You might have seen it in a few of my campaigns where I've been hitting S quite a lot and moving the front over, other than letting the AI rely on it, which tends to get really jumbled. And it tends to do silly things like have like six divisions placed on one province and then only one on the other. It's like a really thin front, but really thick on one certain point. And that's useful. I ain't got a good example to show you here, but let's just hypothetically say there was an enemy division here. I right click, 
a battle would commence, so in the little circle, and I wasn't winning, so I'd hit H. H is to hold ground, and it'll cancel it off. Yet again, that's super helpful if if you don't know if you're going to win, and it's just a nice idea just to select the army. Right click, am I winning, am I losing, is this even going to be a good victory if I even push them back? If not, that's not, hold back, and just hold back from there. Also quite useful if, for instance, you have a plan executed, and uh, it's not working. It really is not working. So you've got a Z for a front line. Just a few other hotkeys just to make it a bit interesting. So let's say we were going to attack into Guatemala. Uh, we select those divisions. Z is front line. And X is to make an offensive line. And in that case, you, you just decide to execute the attack. They're all attacking, but we're losing on every single front. You press H and they'll hold, hold ground and they'll not move. And then you can cancel the order as well. Great. All right, what do we need to do next? So, a little talk about production. Now, this is the most ideal way of doing it. So, this is a problem that you notice the AI makes quite a lot. You'll notice they're in a battle together, in a war, and the strength of their divisions is like really low. They're like 50% strength. The reason why that happens is they're prioritizing new divisions over strengthening their existing ones. And one way as a player, you can avoid that is just selecting high priority for reinforcement. So what that will mean is they, they, the new supplies will be invested first into existing divisions that are on the field. So they'll keep them as high as 100% as possible. And if it turns out that they're 100% and that the extra supplies are not needed, then they'll be given to new recruits. I have no reason why you would want to do that anyway. Um, I think maybe the only instance where you wouldn't want to do that is when you would want to do that is if you've got like a huge front and you're not covering the whole front. So therefore you want... You don't mind having half strength divisions covering the whole front because covering the whole front is going to be more useful than just holding one specific hard location. So that's the one instance why you wouldn't wouldn't want to do that. But for the most part, you want to have high uh, reinforcement selected. And if you wanted to focus on making your divisions as strong as up to date as possible, aka the latest divisions, uh, so the latest technology you'd want to select uh, upgrades as well. But be aware that it will focus on reinforcements and upgrades first before it focuses on specific divisions. And don't be worried, you can actually set, if you just desperately need to say, oh, I really need some military police, you can say put that on high priority as well. Just be aware, just be super aware that if you do click on both of these, it will focus um, a huge amount of production on upgrades and reinforcements before it starts focusing on cavalry. Nice to know. Okay, what else have we got? Okay, so this is quite useful in the event you want to send Lend-Lease to your allies, preferably AI, because a, a friendly player is going to tell you what he needs. It's like, I need infantry equipment, I need supply equipment, um, but an AI won't. So in this case, what you do is you'd find a battle, because you've got the Germans, which I'm allied with, uh, versus the Soviet Union, select a battle, preferably one they're losing, because that gives you an idea of why they're losing. And you can see they've got an infantry division here, which I would assume is predominantly going to be infantry because it's 100% soft attack. Um, the piercing is 13. That still seems quite low. So it makes me think this is mainly infantry without anti-tank. And it is also at 50% strength. So the, well, the question that asked me there is, these, I'm going to let you aware this is mainly guesswork, but it gives you an idea of what the AI needs in supply-wise. So you could say... I would personally think that an infantry division would require mainly infantry guns to begin with, infantry equipment, then supply equipment, and then maybe artillery as well. There would be the predominantly reasons why that would not be at full strength. And you've got a, light, a medium tank division and a light tank division, which is self-explanatory. They've got to be motorized, cool, possibly mechanized, mm, probably not as likely. And um, yeah, light and medium tanks that they need. So that, therefore you can prioritize in a lend lease of what you're going to send against them to help them out. And trust me, you really want to do this because the AI has got a huge problem, which I stated before, of focusing too much on new divisions than reinforcing existing ones. Uh, that's something that will probably get fixed in future. Okay, what else have we got? Okay, so this is quite useful if you are a minor power. If you are a small nation, let's just say Romania, Bulgaria, Greece, and you're having trouble with manpower, at the start of the game, you get quite a lot of like level one technology ships, and what you can do is disband those ships and get manpower. This is not the best example because ship submarines don't have a lot of manpower, but if I was to disband this ship, I would gain back uh, 200 manpower. When you've got like big 
capital ships like heavy cruisers, battle cruisers, battleships, and carriers, they have like a thousand manpower. And that thousand manpower, that's one battalion. So don't underestimate it. If you have lots of really old ships that you're barely even using and you need that manpower, especially desperately if you want to deploy some planes, then get rid of one of your ships and take those sailors off the boats and put them on planes. <laughs> okay, what else have we got? Um, okay, this is another production one. So, two things. One, one of the issues that AI has is it does has issues with basic equipment. So what you could potentially do is have a row of basic equipment. Now, why would you want old equipment? Well, there's two reasons. One, you can produce them quicker. Because if you look, it's only 0.3 production for one basic infantry equipment, where a level 3 infantry equipment is 1. So technically, you can make uh, 3 and a bit basic equipment over one infantry equipment. So when it comes down to it, quantity might just be what you need over quality when you are supplying potentially uh, your allies. So in this case, I could send them, uh, let's have a look, basic equipment. I could send them 100% of my supply. And there you go. So in that case, you can keep your enemies reinforced. This is mainly to, to kind of patch up the AI, which has a few issues and it keeps their supply nice and high. Really useful if you just want to make sure that you have a, a slight edge over the AI if you are fighting with, for instance, in my case, Germany and the Soviet Union. One of the things to make you aware as well is don't underestimate outdate equipment. So remember, if you select this tick box, it shows you all out of date equipment. Don't underestimate that because remember that old equipment uses less production costs. So just be aware of that because if you desperately need equipment, any old equipment is better than none. Having less strength in your division is going to hurt you more than having old equipment. So just Think about that. Also to be aware, there's, there's three kinds of equipment that you tend to use throughout the whole game. And that's supply equipment, uh, motorized, and also basic infantry equipment. Now all divisions use this. Imagine, not, not always universally, but you tend to find that late game you do use more supply equipment, you do use more motorized. And it, it comes into it plays into so many different elements of your division. So the truth is, if you over make supply equipment or over make motorized or over make old infantry equipment, don't worry about it because you're going to use it at some point and you can always trade it out. Your allies will use it just as much as you do. So the fact is, you may overproduce at the start of the game on the supply equipment or motorized. You're going to use it at some point anyways. Don't underestimate that. Unlike artillery, for instance, which will get upgraded later in the game, and so as infantry equipment, which will as well. But yet again, I keep making a big emphasis. Basic infantry equipment is really, really useful. Another little element as well. I, I discovered this only a few days after playing the game, but I feel like if you don't know this, it's going to really hurt you. But if you hold down shift on your priority list, so you probably already know this, but the higher up the list they are, the more priority they have um, for resources uh, and production. So in this case, if you move it up and down, they'll switch out, which is the most highest priority. And if you left click and hold shift, sorry, if you hold shift and click on up and down, it moves all the way to the top and all the way to the bottom, which is kind of cool. Because I think when you first add a new row in, it goes directly to the top. Oh no, it doesn't, it goes to the bottom. So if you wanted to maximize priority, hold shift up all the way to the top. Okay, what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to make an extra division um, just to demonstrate another element that I've forgotten. So we'll make a big, strong motorized division and we'll train a bunch of them. Okay, so right now we are behind on motorized. So if you hover over, that says that we need motorized. It's the one in yellow. And if you go into logistics, which is uh, this button here, you can actually see the deficit. So we currently need 8, 4,800 motorized. If you hold space and let the game produce... Oh, we're not actually producing any. Let's make some. So, motorize a row of them. Shift them to the top. And there you go. So, we're producing them. And there you go. It's going to take 800 days before we make our quota for what we're using. Be aware that number is not accurate. Because over time, as you start gearing more into efficiency for the factories that you've assigned to, you notice the production goes up. So, each day it goes up 0.3. Uh, 0.42 and then that will take that into account with that calculation so it gives you an idea so it like says you can say to yourself oh wow I am really far behind a motorized I desperately need to make some it's gonna be 745 days that's a huge amount of time so in that case I might want to assign more factories to motorize to keep yourself up to date in that case we've added some more and the days have dropped significantly so it's just under a, just over a year now okay another map one Okay, so I think this is absolutely huge. Oh, wow. When I've discovered this, it helped me out so much. 
So if you've got a specific division that you want to find, it's a nightmare. How the hell do you find it? I have to go click on each individual icon. The good news is, is if you hover over this one, this one is a level one, level two. And I'm like, I really want this one because this one's highly trained. I'll only use this on the front line. So you hover over it and right click and it's right there. Found another one. We want this one that's high quality. The high quality is level two trained. Right click on it. There you go, you're there. That makes so much life easy. When I discovered that one, that was like a the biggest eureka moment. <laughs> makes life so much easier. Um, and then another example here. Can we find another one maybe? Uh, here. We want this one. There. And it's there. Easy. That also works the same way when you want to find specific, uh, specific areas that are repairing. So... You find yourself, oh no, what's happening here? I'm getting a bit of partisans damaging my infrastructure. Where is it? So go to here, right click, and you can zoom in the exact same way here as well on all the areas. And as an added bonus as well, you can get a highlight of where it is as well. So you're like, oh, I don't know where this is. You want to cover over it really quick. You don't want to zoom all the way in. Just hover over it and you can see exactly what province that one is. That's so useful for infrastructure. If you've got a supply bottleneck and you're trying to find the source of it and then you start building lots of roads and you think, do I still need to continue to build this road? I'm like, not really, but you hover over it and you can see specifically what's been worked on. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I've been working on these tips for so long, writing down them every time I think of one that really helped me out. And if any of these helped you out, let me know. If you've got any tips for me as well, feel free to hit them in the comments. Like, subscribe, click on the little cog, and also click on the tick box to be notified when I upload next. I'm going to try and make more of these if you do enjoy them, and I'll work on some other tips in future. Guys, I hope you all have an awesome day, and thank you so much for watching the video. Goodbye.